While it was supposed to be closing day for this investment property for my clients in Hoboken, it became a stark reminder as to why you always do a thorough final walkthrough before you close on a property. There are a few very important steps when buying a home. And if there's one that I see get looked past or brushed off way too often, it's the final walkthrough. Becoming a new homeowner or first time investor can be really exciting. So I often see buyers just wanting to close already, especially because life itself is pretty busy. So even to schedule a closing date is tough, then having to reschedule it is even harder. So I see people wanting to rush through this final walkthrough because, you know, A, they want to close already, B, they don't want to have to reschedule, they're excited. But I caution you, this final walkthrough is important because Listen, when you take ownership of the house, you're not only getting the home, you're getting all of the problems that come along with it. Now, luckily over the past 12 years, I haven't had too many problems with final walkthroughs, but there have been some, and most recently with this property in Hoboken, there was an obvious problem. So in this video, I'm gonna walk you through the process you should use for your final walkthrough, how to test all your systems, and make sure that the property's been kept well by the seller from that contract date all the way up to the closing date. Then I'm gonna take you back to that property that we showed at the beginning of the video that had that sewage issue. And I'm gonna give you the process I used to keep my buyer at an advantage, making sure that they were able to cover their bases financially and close on that same day. So let's go through the checklist and the things that you should be looking at and the steps that you should be taking in order to make sure that the property has been kept in good condition. Step one, test all plumbing items. That's showers, dishwashers, sinks, flush all of the toilets. Once you've gone through all these steps, find the main plumbing source if it's available to you and go look to see if there's any clogs. If there is, you're gonna see a backflow, kind of like that property at the beginning of this video. Also, if there's an exterior trap, you'll see this with single and multi-families. Go ahead and take a look at that. Similarly, if there's a clog, it'll be backflowing. Step two is to test all of your appliances. That's your stove, microwave, washers, and dryers. Quick tip here, to see if the microwave is working, throw in some popcorn. No, I'm just joking. Grab a piece of ice from the freezer, put that on a paper towel, put it on for like 15 seconds and see if it melts. If it does, your microwave's working. Step three is to look for any active leaks or covered up leaks that have taken place. So you'll be looking at the ceilings throughout for discoloration, roof areas, inside of vanities, as well as cabinets and plumbing sources. So check for areas that have shown any warping due to some water intrusion. Look at the bottom of the vanity. You'll see if there was any dampness. Search on the inside of the vanity, then go down to the floor below, look up at the ceiling, and see if there's any hints that there was any leakage that had taken place and have been covered up. These are the little hints that tend to leave some evidence behind. All right, so let's talk about what happened to that property at the beginning of this video. What we did in terms of the remedy in order to close on that same day. So we did our checklist. We went through every floor. There was four floors since it was a four family. We flushed every single toilet. We ran every single sink. We ran all the showers. And then when we were done with that, we made our way down to the basement and we found a mess. So what do you do in that situation? Well, the first thing you do is you document it. You take photos, you take videos. Then you send it forward to your attorney. So we sent it to the buyer's attorney. I notified the seller's agent that something would be coming through. And then what do you do from there? Well, since I have a background in contracting, I was able to provide my buyers with a worst case scenario cost in terms of what would it cost if this entire plumbing system needed to be replaced. And then from there, you can negotiate an agreeable number or an amount of money in which money can go into an escrow account that's somewhat neutral, meaning that let's say in this case it was $10,000. If indeed, we closed and it cost $10,000 to remedy that situation, all of that money would have gone to the buyer. Now, in this situation, the seller got in front of it, they sent out a plumber, they cleaned the clog out, and then for us, we were agreeable to do an escrow amount that was less than what I just mentioned, but still, we had that escrow money, and they have a week or so to have a plumber come out, confirm that the work was done properly, and if there is indeed a remedy that needs to take place in addition to what the seller did, well, then that money would come out of the escrow monies that are in there. But if everything's good, all of that money goes back to the seller. So this way, the buyer's able to cover their bases, both buyer and seller are able to close on that day because we know they both want to. 
and then everybody can walk away from this happy and move on to their new ownership and do whatever they need to do next. So I hope this video was helpful for you. I know it's always exciting to buy a property, take new ownership, but don't look past the final walkthrough phase. If you have any questions or if you had anything that you'd like to talk about, call, text, or email, and I'm happy to help. Thank you again for watching, and I'll talk to you soon.